There is a connection between the ears of an elephant and the bald head of a newborn baby. Do you know what it is? It has to do with a physics principle called scaling. It comes into play in many aspects of science and life, but most people aren't familiar with it. Here's the story. As objects get bigger, by growing or by scaling up something small, or any other means, they gain interior volume faster than they gain surface area. They get thicker faster than they get bigger. What? Well, let me explain. People commonly think in terms of direct proportion, twice as big, twice as heavy, but this is absolutely not the case. As objects get bigger, the ratio of their surface area to interior volume gets smaller because surface area is a two-dimensional reference and interior volume is three-dimensional. Take a cube, for example. If it's one inch on a side, it has how much surface area? Six square inches, right? Six sides eats one inch by one inch. How much interior volume does it have? Well, one cubic inch. So the ratio of surface area to volume is six to one. If the cube was full of hot water, there's six square inches of surface area to radiate the heat away. But what about a cube two inches on a side? What's its surface area? Well, it still has six sides, of course, but now each side is four square inches. So six times four is 24 square inches. Wow, a lot more. So what about interior volume? Well, there's two layers of four cubic inches each, so eight cubic inches altogether. What's the ratio now? 24 to 8, or 3 to 1. So the 2-inch cube has only half the surface area compared to its interior volume than the 1-inch cube. And if we went bigger, the ratio would get smaller. So what, you ask? Well, for one thing, it's about cooling. If something has a large interior volume compared to its surface area, it'll have trouble staying cool. It doesn't have enough surface area to radiate the heat away. That's why elephants have those big ears, additional surface area. And the other side of the coin, high surface area to volume ratio means trouble staying warm. It's true in mice and elephants, and it's true with many other things. It's also about weight. A large object held off the ground needs more support. Notice the structural difference between the elephant and the lizard. The elephant's legs are directly beneath to hold up the weight. The lizard's legs are off to the side, which gives more speed and agility, but can't support as much weight. Also the reason that dragons are fiction. The structural design wouldn't work. No way those skinny legs, offset to the side, could hold up the kind of weight an object that big would have to carry. The electrical transmission and distribution system is built using three phases, three separate circuits. There are several reasons for this, but scaling is one of them, as shown here. The point is, as things get bigger, their basic properties change. They change more rapidly than you might think based on initial observations. Keep it in mind, it comes up again and again. One last example, and I'll leave it alone. In the 1950s and 60s, there was a string of really bad science fiction movies in which some small animal, like an ant or a spider, was exposed to something, usually radiation, and grew to gigantic size. It then proceeded to terrorize the population, level cities, and take an unusual interest in an attractive human female. Knowing what you now know about scaling, if this really happened, Yeah, it's A. If you take something and just scale up its dimensions, its interior volume increases much faster than its external dimensions. A giant ant would collapse in a heap. Those skinny legs couldn't hold it up. And the baby thing. You can figure this out, right? Small baby, large surface area to interior volume ratio. It loses heat quickly. You must dress a baby warmer than an adult for the same temperature conditions. It's simple physics, scaling. There's more to the subject, of course. Making big things small has its own set of contradictions. Search the internet for On Being the Right Size, or, my favorite, The Biology of B-Movie Monsters, for additional details. 
I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.